Here are my tips for pumping the V11 suspension. It's not completely necessary, but it would make things easier if you have some lithium grease. Take a Q-tip and apply a bit of grease. Take the pump that was supplied with the V11 and put just a little grease on the threads and where the spinner touches the body. When you get the V11, what you need to do first is put air in the bottom chambers. Remove the cap. Apply a little grease on the threads around the valve. Make sure the lever is in the closed position against the hose. Screw in the pump and switch up the valve. Pump to a suitable pressure for your weight. When you're done, flip the switch to close the valve, then empty the pressure from the hose with the button on the pump. Always remember to check the other side as well. Apply some grease. Check that the lever is in the correct position. Screw the pump in, open the valve, then pump to the same pressure you put on the other side. And again, hit the switch to close the valve and release the pressure from the pump. Now we check the pressures in the top chamber, which is the negative pressure chamber. You need a 3mm hex driver for this. First, remove the saddle bolts from the front and from the back. And to make things easier for the first few times, remove the saddle also. Remove the valve cap. Here as well, put a little bit of grease around the threads. Always check that the lever is in the correct position when you start screwing in the pump. Then open the valve, pump, hit the switch, empty the hose and detach the pump. Once you have done this a few times, you can pump the top chambers without removing the saddles completely. You just need to remove the top saddle bolts so you can stretch the saddle open just for half an inch or so. Then if you are handy with your fingers, you might be able to get the pump screwed in. Be careful not to ruin the threads when you try. I actually sometimes do this without even removing the saddle bolts, but I don't think I should recommend that as it requires a bit too much patience. Don't forget to put the valve caps back on, as we do not want any dust in there. Slide the saddle back on, put the screws on the bottom part, and then the top saddle bolts on the front and on the back. Flick the handle up for easier access. That's it for the pumping part. Then we have to determine whether the pressure is correct for your weight. Put a piece of tape on the side of the handle. Measure the distance from the control board top cover to the side of the handle and draw a line at a nice even number. Then power on the wheel, stand on it and measure the distance at the same place. It's a good idea to gently hop up and down and measure a few times because the suspension doesn't always reset to the exact same position. The difference between the measurements is called a sag, and I would argue that it is the most important part when adjusting the suspension. For the V11, a good sag is between 3 and 3.5 three and centimeters. That is between 1.2 and 1.4 inches. One test you can do while riding slowly is hopping up and down and try to feel if you are bottoming out or topping out first on the suspension. If you're bottoming out first and it feels almost like you were jumping on solid ground, there is not enough pressure at the bottom or there is too much pressure on the top. If the suspension feels like a trampoline and you top out the suspension easily, then you have too much pressure on the bottom or too little at the top. If you want a floaty ride, you should try a little less pressure on both the top and the bottom. But if you want more sensitive action for small bumps and a more progressive suspension behavior like you would want when going off-road or jumping or riding hard, you can try increasing both pressures. I weigh 103 kilograms and I'm currently finding the best performance at 160 psi on the main chamber and 80 psi on the negative chamber. Quick tests with a tiny 48 kg rider, we found 60 psi at the main chamber and 35 psi on the negative chamber to be the most comfortable for slow riding at least. 
What could work reasonably well for anyone would be to check the main chamber pressure from the in-motion chart and then put something like 50% of that to the negative chamber. So that's about it. Happy riding!